Hey guys, this is the fall semester exam review. There's a lot of stuff here. Obviously, fast forward to the parts you need to watch. You probably don't need all of it. It's going to take a long time to get through all of it. Um, but yeah, you probably don't need all of it. So here we go. We're just going to go quickly. Number one says the supplement of an angle, excuse me, is 35 degrees more than twice its complement. The supplement of an angle, 35 degrees more than twice its complement. We talked about, hey guys, you know, let's say you have a 10 degree angle. Wouldn't the complement be 80 degrees? Or 90 minus 10, aren't those the same thing? How do you get complements? They have to add up to 90. So we would say that if the angle is unknown, if we call the angle X, the complement would be 90 minus X. The supplement would be 180 minus X. We don't know how big X is, but we know to get the complement, we subtract it from 90. We know to get the supplement, we subtract it from 180. So the supplement of an angle would be 180 minus the angle is, that's equals, 35 more than, that would be plus 35, twice its complement, twice its complement. This is the equation that we're solving. So I'm going to go through that real quick. That would be 180 minus x equals 180 minus 2x plus 35. Don't forget to distribute. The 180s cancel out. So x equals 35. And that is the angle. So if they said how big is the complement or how big is the supplement, we could get those. But the angle is 35. Collinear. I don't even need a picture. I know that a and f are collinear. I know that b and e are collinear. I can always draw a line that connects any two points. It doesn't matter where they are. So those are definitely collinear. Three points. Option B is coplanar but not collinear, so I do need to look. CAF, CAF, that is not a straight line. I have to turn. So those are coplanar still, right? They still make a triangle. They're still flat, but they're not a straight line. D, C, E, and B. Here's D, C, and E. And then B is up here. B is above it. In order to get to B, I would have to draw a pyramid. A pyramid is not a plane. A pyramid is not flat, so that is non-coplanar. B, D, and C. What do we got? B, D, and C. Again, that's, a, that's, that's flat. That's a triangle, but it's not a line, so it is B. And then A, D, B and E. A, D, and E all make a line, throw in B, and we got one big triangle that gets them all still flat, still coplanar. So those would be coplanar. Boom. Nailed it. What is the slope of a line that goes through those two points? So the slope is just the change in Y over the change in X. Well, the change in y is minus 3, and the change in x is plus 5, which is negative 3 fifths. So what is the slope of a line parallel? The parallel line would be negative 3 fifths, and perpendicular, the perpendicular line, would be positive 5 thirds. Parallel lines have the same slope. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. Use the diagram to answer each question. Show your equations and work. CK bisects angle TCH. So here's angle TCH. So these two angles would be equal. Then we know that TCK would be equal to KCH. JCL, JCL plus LCH would have to be 180. That's a full, that's all 180 degrees there. That's a line. Those are a linear pair. MCT and blank form a linear pair. Well, if I follow this side, there's no line, right? There's a little bit of a turn here. I know it's hard to tell, but that is a turn, so that's not a line, so I can't follow that side. Follow this side, and I would need this, TCK to finish the line. Remember, a linear pair is two angles, has to be just two that form a line. JCK, so JCK, that's this angle, so that's right here. 
and blank are vertical. Well, to get vertical, you follow each line. So if I go here and I go here, I've connected all of this. That would be MCH. Those are my vertical angles. This is a mess up. This is supposed to be perpendicular. So CL is perpendicular to MK. So here's MK. CL is perpendicular, making both of these 90. Angle KCL is this part. Well, that'd have to be 90. CT bisects JCK. Here's JCK. So those two parts are equal. JCT is 84. So this would be 84, which makes this 84. All of these make a line. So that's 180 minus um, 168 leaving us with 12 degrees over here. MCL is a right angle. Then how big is LCH? Well, if that's 90, then these and these three have to add up to 180. That'd be 180 minus 12 minus 90, which would be 90 minus 12 would be 78 for this spot. Weapons. All right. If JCK is 127 and TCH is 115, so we have JCK, we have TCH, find TCK. Well, the thing we know is that all of this is 180. So if this much of it, if TCK... I mean, sorry, uh, if JCK is 127, 180 min oh my gosh, minus 127 would be 53. So this part would be 53. And then we have this one, TCH is at 115. So 115 minus 53, uh, that's kind of funky, minus 15. I'm just going to type it in. I don't want to be wrong. 115 minus 53. I don't know why that feels so hard. I got 62. Nailed it. But yeah, you had to realize that you had 180 degrees there. Find the missing angles in the diagram. All right. There's a lot going on. I am going to go quick. I can't. If I go slow, it'll take forever. But we have parallel lines, so we're looking for alternate interior angles, same side interior angles. We're looking for the letter Z, the letter C. We're looking for corresponding angles. We're looking for triangles. We're looking for linear pairs, vertical angles. All right, so like if that's 90, I know all these are 90. If that's 54, I know that's 54, 126, 126. If that's 114, that's 114, 66, 66. Alternate interior angles, I know this is going to be 66 as well, right? If I follow that, so up here, I got 66. 114, 114. Um, if we've got this intersection, I can go like this. Those are parallel lines. So if that's 126, this is going to be 126, 126, 54, 54. I can also go this way. So this is 54. This would be 54. I can use the 90. So this would be 90 and 90. And that would leave me with, um, if we have a triangle here, he could get this angle that way if we wanted. But 90 minus 50 would be 40. Minus 4 would be 36. And 36. Um, over here, we can go like that. So we got 126, 54. Wait, what did I just do? Huh, wrong side, wrong side. 126, 54, 126, 54. And then I got this situation, 66 and 54. That would leave us with 60 and 60, which leaves us with 120 and 120. Um, oh, this would be 36. Next to 36 would be 144, 144, 36. Got that 36 from that triangle. Or you could have gone long range, alternate interior. You just got to make sure you're using triangles when you do those things. Find X and the required angles in the diagram at the right. Well, we have parallel lines everywhere. 
So angle one and six, here's one and six. I know that those are supplementary because these would be equal vertical and these make the letter C. Those have to add up to 180. There's, a, there's more than one way to think about it, but one and six in this picture are gonna be supplementary. So three X plus five plus four X plus seven has to equal 180. So seven X plus 12 is 180. So seven X equals 168. So X would equal 20, 140, 28, four. Uh, 24, I should probably type it in. I think I'm right. So then plug that in, 72 plus five, 77. And then um, 96 plus seven, 103. And there's our answers. Uh, next picture, we've got angle 5 and angle 11. Here's 5 and here's 11, parallel lines. So those are going to be congruent. Those are corresponding. So negative 3 times 2x minus 6 is going to equal negative 6 minus 6x. So negative 6x plus 18, don't forget to distribute, equals negative 6 plus 6x. Don't forget to distribute. Add the 6x over, this would be 12x. Add the 6 equals 24, x equals 2. Plug in the 2, they're supposed to be equal, so we can check our work. 4 minus 6, negative 2, positive 6. And 6 minus 12, negative 6, positive 6. So 2, 6, 6. Nailing it. I saw these triangles. If these two sides are equal, then these two angles are equal. So we know that 180 minus 40 is 140. So divided by 2, those have to be 70 degrees each. So we're talking about 70 degrees each on those. Over here, we got this spot. So this would have to be 56, right? Those two sides are equal, so these two angles are equal. So 56 plus 56, that's 112. 180 minus 112 would be 68 degrees. Um, over here, these two sides are equal, so these two angles are equal. So this would have to be 3x plus 26. So add all of those together. And I have 3, 6, 8x. 26 plus 26, 52, 58 equals 180. So 8x be 122 um, divided by 8 would be 61 61 halves 61 fourths I would leave it like that um, the decimal what would the decimal be 60 would be 15 and a fourth 0.25 um, over here these two sides are equal because of those base angles. So we know that x plus 16 is equal to 2x plus 8. So x equals 8. Woo! We are zooming. How big are the exterior angles of an equilateral triangle? Equilateral triangle, each corner must be 60. So if you extend it, the exterior angle must be 120. A right triangle has an exterior angle that's 140. So it's a right triangle, exterior angle of 140. That means the one next to it would have to be 40, making the other one 50. So 40 and 50 would be the two acute angles. Perfect. Number 21. Oh, a lot going on here. We have perpendicular here. Um, we have parallel, CA and DB, parallel. Angle 1 is 42. Angle 8 is 72. So that's the stuff they gave us. So what else can we do? I love parallel lines, so 42 is going to go here as well. Um, 72 is going to go here as well. 
so we know we got that going on. So 72 plus 42, 110, 114, 66 for this spot. So 66, 114, 114. Um, if that's 90 degrees, 90 minus 72, this would be 18. If that's 90, be 48. Um, this would have to be 90 because these would be corresponding angles, those two spots. Don't know what else we need. One, do we, we have all the numbered ones at this point, so I don't know. It says find the missing angles. I'm feeling pretty good. We got the numbered ones. What are the reasons you can use to prove triangles are congruent? There's five. And I'm going to do an example of each. SSS would be two triangles that look like this, right? Two triangles where the sides match. SAS would be two sides and the included angle, two sides and the included angle. AAS would be two angles and a non-included side, but it has to be the same one, same non-included side. ASA would be two angles again, but this time the included side. And HL is a right triangle where you have the hypotenuse and a leg. All right. Oh, and here we go. All right. That's on, all we have are angles, none. Here we have a shared side. We have S, S, angle in between, S, A, S. Here we have vertical angles, angle, angle, non-included side. Here we have a third side, S, S, S. Here we have a third side, S, S, S. That's it. We done. Um, proof time. Guys, the test will be multiple choice. You won't have to write a proof, but you do need to know how they work. I'm going to go ahead and write these, see how we do. So here we have JA is perpendicular, so that would be 90. EI and AI are perpendicular. So in our proof, I'm going to call those angles 1 and 2. We need to write that angle 1 is the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 2. If lines are perpendicular... Well, actually, we'll just say definition of perpendicular. Uh, that's what we went with this year. It's kind of a cheat, but if they're perpendicular, we know they're 90. If we know they're 90, we know they're equal. I'm going to call these angles 3 and 4. We know that 3 is congruent to 4. We know that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4, and that would be just definition of vertical angles. They tell us AJ is congruent to EI. So what do we have? We have angle, angle, non-included side. So we got it all. So triangle jam would be congruent. J-A-M would have to go with E-I-M. And that would be angle, angle, side. Now we can say this. J-M is congruent to E-M. And that reason, of course... CPCTC, right? Look at the name, J-M, E-M. Are those the corresponding parts of congruent triangles? Yes, they are. This proof is a lot longer. Let's do the best we can. These two lines are parallel. H is the midpoint of K-R. So we need to get that in our proof. We know that KH is congruent to HR, and that is just definition of midpoint. All right, and we're trying to prove RY is congruent to KA. Um, based on the pieces they gave us, this is going this is going to take a little bit. We're going to have to prove these two triangles, these two small ones first. So. What do we have on those two small ones? I'm going to call this angle 1, 2. I'm going to call this angle 3 and 4. So we know that angle 1 is going to angle 2. And those are vertical angles. We know that 3 is going to 4. 
And those are alternate interior angles. That's the theorem. So now I have that triangle KYH must be congruent. If I go KYH, it'd have to be RAH. And that'd be angle, angle, non uh, sorry, um, it'd be angle, angle, non-included side. Okay, so I got those. Now I need to use their parts. We know that YH is congruent to AH. So I need to say that YH is congruent to AH. That's YH is congruent to AH. And that is CPCTC. Um, we know that KH is congruent to RH, but we've already said that. But we could say it again, but we've already said that. Um, and then we have these vertical angles. I'm going to call them numbers 5 and 6. So we can say angle 5 is congruent to angle 6, and those are also vertical angles. And now we can say triangle YRH Y, R, H, what would Y, R, H go with? That's blank one, two, so be A, K, H. And that would be side, angle, side. And now finally, finally, I can say R, Y is congruent to K, A. And that would be C, P, C, T, C. Guys, not a high priority if you can't do that. That's one of the reasons I did it just real fast, just so you could see it. But dang, I didn't want to take a long time on it. There's more than one way to do it. This is probably the fastest way, though. All right, assume that E, F, and D are midpoints. Which segments are congruent and which are parallel? So I'm not going to list every single one, but like these three would be the same size because we know if these are midpoints, that that's a mid-segment. And a mid-segment is half its base. So, for instance, if this side was 10, you would know that these are both 5 because that's a midpoint. And you would know that this is 5 because that's a mid-segment, which is half its base. And I could do that for each section, right? I know that these two sides, or these three segments, are equal as well for the same reason. So there's a lot going on there. Um, I'm not going to answer all that. That would just take too long. But, uh, okay, I'll do it real quick. So we would know like AB is parallel to DE. And based on that, we would know that AF is congruent to FB is congruent to DE. Um, for the other side here, we have BC and DF. BC is parallel to DF. So we would have DF is congruent to CE is congruent to EB. And then lastly, over here, we have FE is parallel to AC. So we know that AD is congruent to DC is congruent to FE. Okay, that's what we know. Now let's solve the problem. You guys happy? I hope you're happy. I'm happy. FD is 7X. 7X. And BC is 56. So it would take two of those to equal the whole thing. That's the rule for mid-segments. So 14X equals 56. X would have to equal 4. Got it. How do you know if three side lengths can be a triangle if A plus B is greater than C? Give an example of three side lengths that form a triangle. Um, three, four, and five. Three plus four equals seven. Seven is greater than five. And three that don't. Three, four, and seven. 3 plus 4 is 7, and 7 is equal to 7, not a triangle. So something like that. A, a triangle CDE has those vertices. 
Determine the coordinates of F if DF is a median of the triangle. All right, so we have a triangle called C, D, E. D, F is a median, so F is the midpoint of C, E. So the midpoint of C, E equals F. So the midpoint of C, E would be negative 2 plus negative 5 divided by 2, comma, 5 plus negative 2 divided by 2. Negative 2 and negative 5 is negative 7 halves. This would be positive 3 halves. So that is the coordinates of F. Determine the slope of the altitude from vertex C. Well, vertex C would be perpendicular to DE. So the perpendicular slope of DE. Well, DE slope would be um, 4 to negative 2 is negative 6. 1 to negative 5 is negative 6. That's 1. So the perpendicular slope would be negative 1. Got it. Write an inequality for, for the possible values of x. Hinge theorem. If these two sides match these two sides, which they do, then the bigger angle, 34, has the bigger third side. So we know 7x plus 1 is bigger than 8x minus 5. So x is less than 6. Well, if x is less than 6, it can't just get smaller forever. We know that the smaller side cannot be 0. Once it hits 0, it disappears. So 8x minus 5 must be greater than 0. 8x must be more than 5. 8x, or sorry, x must be bigger than 5 eighths. So x must be bigger than 5 eighths, but less than 6 based on this problem. Any number between would work. 80, 40, that's 120. This would be 60. 90 and 70, it's 160. This will be 20. So to do this question, we need a list from smallest to biggest. Nope, biggest to smallest. I should be reading correctly. I'm going to do triangle dab first. And if you were in here, you just saw me dab. So triangle dab, that's, that's a lie. I didn't actually dab. Okay, now I dabbed. Okay, okay, okay. So focusing on just the red triangle, let's go biggest to smallest. It would be DB. It would be AB. And then the smallest one would be AD. Then we shift gears. Let's look at the green triangle. Let's go biggest to smallest. That would be DC is bigger than CB is bigger than DB. We, it's based off the angles. Remember, the biggest angle produces the biggest side. The smallest angle produces the smallest side. So I should have said that earlier, but that's what I'm doing. So overall, biggest to smallest, there's your answer. With that middle section being DB. We know from the green triangle that DC and CB are both bigger than DB. We know from the red triangle that AB and AD are both smaller than DB. State the special segment that AB represents in each triangle. I'm just going to use abbreviations. This would be the median. Nope. This would be everything. It's a median and an altitude. So it's a median, it's an altitude, it's an angle bisector, and it's a perpendicular bisector. It's all four. Woo! This would just be an angle bisector. Um, AB would be an altitude in this one. This one would be just a median. This one would be just an altitude. This would be just a perpendicular bisector, and this one would be just an altitude. Um, a median of a scalene triangle goes through a vertex and a midpoint. A median of a scalene triangle goes through a vertex and a midpoint. That is true. That's, part, that's just its definition, vertex to midpoint. And a, an angle bisector of a scalene triangle goes to the midpoint. False. If, on an isosceles triangle, it happens once. On an equilateral triangle, it happens three times. But on a scalene triangle, it doesn't happen. 
An altitude is always in the interior of the triangle. False. On an obtuse triangle like this one, it's not. So two of them are actually outside if it's obtuse. And on a right triangle like this one, the altitude is the leg. Or two of the altitudes are legs. The altitude of an isosceles triangle drawn from its vertex angle is also an angle bisector. The altitude of an isosceles triangle drawn from the vertex angle is... That's true. It had to be all four. True. An altitude of a scalene triangle goes through a midpoint. False. Again, on an isosceles triangle, it happens once from the vertex angle. On an equilateral triangle, it happens all three times. But if it's scalene, it doesn't happen. The three medians of any triangle are concurrent. I don't like that question. I'm going to scratch it out. Weird question. I don't even know what they're even trying to say. They're not the same line, but they do have a point of concurrency. So I'm not even sure what they're asking. Give an example of each property. Reflexive is just, it's just where you write the same thing on both sides. So there's the reflexive property. It's the exact same thing. The exact same thing. Symmetric, however, is like if you have 7 equals x and you need to get x on the left side, symmetric is when you flip the order. Distributive, it's like when you have a number in front and you, well, you distribute it. That'd be AB plus AC in my example. Transitive, we didn't really talk about this year. Substitution could be a lot of things. But if you know that like A equals, or if you know like X equals 15, and then you say like X plus 7 equals Y, you could substitute and say 15 plus 7 equals Y. So Y would have to equal 22. Something like that. A substitution is when you have two things that are equal and you take one out and replace it with the other. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. So angle A would be the same as angle D. Don't have it. Might even need to draw these out. So I have A, which is like having D. I have E, which is like having B. And I have F, which is like having C. So basically, these three have to add up to 180. Um, right, if I draw this out, A, B, C. I have A is X plus 10. I have E, and E is the same as B, is 50. I have F, and F is the same as C, X minus 3. So I know that those have to add up to 180. So that would be 2X... 60 plus 57 equals 180. Stop using your words as weapons. And then we would have, sorry, I got distracted. 2x equals a 123. So x equals 123 halves. Um, classify it by its sides and angles. So we'd have to plug that in. Uh, I'm going to use a calculator for that. 123 halves. So let's see, x plus 10. So this angle would be 143 over 2. And then x minus 3 would be 117 over 2. Um, so all of them are different. So it's scaling. And none of them are bigger than 90, so it's a cube. Scaling and a cube. The midpoint of segment A, B is 5, 3. And there's point A. So we have point A at 2, 18. We have some midpoint at 5, 3. And I want to know where B is. There's a couple ways to think about it. Um, the way I taught you guys is how far are you traveling? If I stack them, it's a little bit easier to do maybe. How do you go from 2 to 5? You add 3. So I'm going to add 3 again. That would be 8. 18 to 3, that's minus 15. So I'm going to do minus 15 again. That's negative 12. That's probably the easiest way to think about it. 
Um, you could call this like x and y, and then apply the midpoint formula, right? 2 plus x divided by 2. You could say 2 plus x divided by 2. You know that has to equal 5. So 2 plus x has to equal 10. x equals 8. Then do the same thing with the y values. 18 plus y divided by 2, you know, has to equal 3. So 18 plus y has to equal 6. So y has to equal negative 12. That's another way you could do it. Find the midpoint of a, b if that's where a and b are. So to get the midpoint, you just add and divide by 2. 2 plus 5, negative 9 plus 5. So that would be 7 halves and negative 2. And then it says, how long is AB? So remember that distance is the square root. It's the change in x squared plus the change in y squared. It's Pythagorean theorem. So 2 to 5 would be 3 squared. Negative 9 to 5 would be 14 squared. Be 196 plus 9 would be 205. So there's your midpoint, there's your distance. G is the centroid of triangle ABC. If BG is 18, then this would be 9. B, oh sorry, BE is a median. And then, so how long is BE? BE would be 27. So if you guys remember that if you have a centroid, it cuts the median one-third, two-thirds. So if I knew that if 18, if this part was 18, then this has to be half, right? One-third is half of two-thirds. So there we go. The end center is equidistant from all three sides. End center inside equidistant from the sides. While the circumcenter, circumcenter is equidistant from all three vertices. Just something you got to know. 38, it says, so we got this triangle. It says angle A, got it, angle B, angle C. So those have to add up to 180. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. As I know that 4x plus 40 plus 6x plus 30 plus negative 2x plus 70 has to be 180. So that's 4, 10, that's 8x. That's 40, 70 plus 140. So 8x has to be 40, x has to be 5. So if I take the 5 and plug it in, that would be 20 plus 40 would be 60. 30 plus 30 would be 60. Uh-oh. And negative 10 plus 70 would be 60. So I know it's an equilateral triangle now. So all the sides are equal. So that means that these two sides have to be equal. So 5y plus 10 has to equal 10y. So 5y has to equal 10. y has to equal 2. So if y is 2, this would be 20 and 20. Find the length of BD. So final answer, 20. But you had to realize it was equilateral before you could do all that. Parallel lines. This is the letter C. Those are same side interior angles. So 15x plus 10 plus 5x minus 40 has to be 180. 20x would have to equal 210. So x would have to be 21 over 2. Yeah, that's the whole thing. I know I went really fast. I probably didn't do a great job of explaining, but that was the entire review. If you have any more questions, come see me, guys. I really want us to do a really great job on this. See ya.